Last week, we, we visited uh, one of my favorite places to fish in the entire state, honestly, the entire southeastern United States, and that is Isla Mirada, Florida, where I'm going to meet up with Dank. Dank is Dave Dankert, Captain Dave Dankert, a legend in the Florida Keys, and has been fishing Flamingo and Florida Bay for 50 plus years. Dave launches out of a, a historic bar, if you will, the Lorelei. It's a landmark here in Isla Mirada. And we make that trek over there and he's taken me to a zillion places to fish over there. And almost every time it's lights out fishing. Even when the weather challenges us, he always manages to find a way to make fishing, well, awesome. Well, Dink, we couldn't have planned it any better. This this is the way it always is. It seems it seems that way, doesn't it? It's gotta be... Every time I get to fish with you, it's got to be blowing 15 to 20 out of the northeast. I mean, it's just gosh, it's consistent at least. It is. We know what we're up against. Yeah, and we got clouds on top of that, so yeah. that's that insult to injury there. Yeah, it's all right. I'd rather blind cast. I'd rather blind cast and sight fish any day. I like a power fish. Well, that may be what we're up against today. We'll, we'll see when we get over there. I think I'll be able to find some uh, yeah, we're gonna, shallow enough water. We're going to be lead. fine. I'm with one of the Keys and Flamingo's best, Dave Denker. There's a lot of hardware at his house, and there's a reason for that. Well, let's see if we can make it happen today. <laughs> let's just get there. OK. Let's, get <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's just get the hell over there. That sounds good to me. So one of the challenges that Dave and I uh, really had to meet in this episode was the fact that there was this front and it made not only the wind made the water in many of the places very turbid or muddy, but we also had in and out light in it. In many times of the day, it was just pretty damn dark. I mean, you couldn't really see. And the shots on the fish as we would drift across the flat and he would adjust the push pole and try to make it so that we could hit as many holes as possible, you'd see a fish and you literally had, you had to see him or if Dave saw him and by the time he gave me instructions to look, it was gone. So the cast had to be reflexive, it had to be quick, it had to be accurate, it had to be right here where you had no chance. There he is. Oh, not Man. quite the behemoth we're looking for. I pulled him out from underneath your push pole. <laughs> oh, come back, Lola. I'm going to stake us right here. Well, that's a good sign. At least there's one snook up in here today. Yeah, there. and he's a little guy, but, you know, hey. See, what bait there are you using? It's, it's really just a great size. It's a four-inch scented jerk shads from Z-Man. I've got it on a 3 16th head. And this color is Beer Run. It's a color that we came up with as a custom color probably about a year ago. And it's turned out to be one of their best selling colors at Z-Man ever. Well, I like and that. I it, like the gold flake in it. I yeah, mean, it, is... it kind of pinfish like. It's, it's croaker like and snook just absolutely. Well, they love it. Well. At certain times, you have to fish dirty water. You're, there's no option available to you. It's just dirty over there. It's muddy. You can't fish the spots you want to fish that are clear water. So you fish dirty water, and the fish are in there. You got to understand, too, that snook and trout have their eyes high on top of their head. Redfish, drum, what have you, their, their eyes are much lower on their head, and they look down. Snook and trout, tarp, and they look up. So they go into murky water, and it acts like a barrier for the sun so the sun's not brightly in their eyes. And they sit there on the bottom or they move around and they feed in that murky water. And if you know the areas that the fish are in, you can pepper those areas. You can false cast and just blind cast all through there and you will pick up fish. And you never know what's gonna eat. The rod bends and you don't know if you a snook, a redfish, a trout, or possibly a tarpon. So it's a lot of fun. Gorgeous fish. 
you know? Absolutely gorgeous. Fish. A really dark tail. So. I bet he's tired of holding his breath. Probably. He's just happy there's no sharks around. Definitely a tailing red. Well, I, I still hit the green hole right there yeah. to your left, 11. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was going to turn off of it. <laughs> uh, that was crazy, man. He spun 180. That's how quiet the boat is going into the wind. Now we can get one, two rod links off the front. All right. These are always fun to grab when they're this fresh. It's so aggressive today too. It's like unbelievable. Another beautiful fish. That I don't know how you saw cool. that one. It wasn't muddy. Yeah, well. Were your eyes in tune for that? You were almost on top of them. Got a ray mud right over there. Wow. That is a chunk of copper right there. That is a chunk. Fishing was somewhat unique today based on the fact that we had heavy wind and a lot of people don't like heavy wind, but you got to remember wind pushes water. When water's moving and moving at a rapid pace with the tide moving in the same direction, those fish like it. And what was pretty wild today was our redfish would mud and they would trail off that mud six to eight feet with mud just pouring out of their gills and off the back of their heads. And if you saw that streak, we could throw up on those redfish and they were so hungry. They were acting like they had never seen a lure before in their life and they were just charging up and eating it. With CA, he can make the shots and it was pretty wild. There he is. Redfish? It's digging like a red. Can't tell in the milk. It's a red. It's a red. Good one too. Once I started seeing those mullet take off, Oh man, these are the most fun to grab. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, he can't even see that lure. He scarfed that thing down. Hefty fish. What a respectable red. Yep. That is a solid, solid fish. One of the nuances of this style of fishing is the fact that you have to know when to do something. And Dave, uh, I mean, he, he's a legend. He's a legend in this game, uh, especially the sight fishing game on the flat. He knows when that sun breaks out, a lot of those fish are gonna slide up the flat. They're gonna get a little bit darker. They're looking to soak up some radiation and they're gonna get hungry. And he put us in those positions when the sun was out so that we could catch these fish. It's just, it's just crazy how you'll have periods, especially early on where it was so dark. And then as the day kind of matured and the sun got up higher and the wind, the upper level currents kind of moved that bank of clouds off us a little bit where the flat got kind of lit up. Well, when the flat got lit up with light, the bite got lit up pretty damn good.
Well, it would appear that we're getting a few more breaks in the sunlight now. We're able to see a little bit better. Yeah, the cloud bank seems to be moving off of us right now. I actually took my jacket off. That felt good. Maybe these snook will get going now. I hope so. They should get turned on with the sun. Throw this little bit bigger bait, either this one or the darters to get a bigger fish here. Well, this water temperature rises one or two degrees, and that's all it's gonna take for them to get going. It'll make a big difference. One right there. That could be a snook. <laughs> Tail walking over <laughs> yeah. the top of that yeah. grass. Look like a sailfish trying to come across. Man, he was like Willie Mays out there. He was. No one's gonna know who that is, but <laughs> you and I. He was the say hey kid. <laughs> Fell out Adam lassoed. So Dank, how long have you been in the park, fishing the park. Not work in the park, but just fishing the park. I started in 1970, fishing down here with my dad. I was 14 years old at the time. And there was an awful lot of fish back then. Everywhere you went, there was fish. Didn't matter what flat you were on. So 50 years. You've been fishing these same waters for 50 years. Yep. Of course, we didn't know what we were doing back then, but there was enough fish around, you could make it happen. We had the arctic tackle, monofilament. Oh yeah. Dull hooks, flimsy fiberglass rods. Oh! There you go. And 50 years later, we're still in here catching them. And you can still catch catfish. Oh. <laughs> when you're on the water with Dank, you know, he's he fishes everybody of at every skill level, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, an advanced, or someone that's another guide. He's just really good at relating to everyone because he is a super experienced guide. So he puts you in a position to be successful regardless. And his knowledge on the flat is such that he shares it with you as you go through the day. I ask him questions. I, I myself today was the student. I learn more today than I, than I do just going out there on my own. It would take me forever. The learning curve is much shortened by Dave. Dave gets you out there, you start fishing the flat. He's like, you need to throw in these deeper holes. They're only about six, six inches, maybe, maybe a foot deeper than the holes that are a little further up. Do not waste time throwing up there. Throw on this contour. This is where they're gonna be on this tide height. That local knowledge, that experience is hard to duplicate. And he understands the way the flow of the water comes around and the angle that the lure has to travel over those zones. When you, when you put him on the back of the boat where he can coach you, he can make anybody look good. Hell, he made me look good today. Got one right here, right here. Come on, baby. Down in the bottom. Head buried. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah. As soon as he lifted up and leveled out. <laughs> he leveled out. Yeah, he you can see it. <laughs> when his head was buried. Unbelievable. They could only see six inches in front of him. World class stuff here. World nice, bright colored red, isn't it? Oh, man. He lit up like a lantern. Uh -huh. You know, when you catch those October, they're Halloween. The first right? time he was down in the grass, I came right over the top of his shoulder. He never even saw no, it. No, he, he can't. He's got grass. He's got a veil of grass around his yeah. head. Second time. Game on, right? Game on. And it's a, it's a, it's a bruiser. Wow, where are these fish when I'm fishing in those tournaments in September, huh? No, it doesn't work out that way for you. They're all in the they're all yeah. in the deep stuff. Man, did he hammer that or what? When I come down to South Florida and fish, it's the truest, most traditional flats fishing you'll ever experience. 
It's unlike places in Southwest Florida like Charlotte Harbor or Tampa Bay. It's a world of difference where I live in the nature coast zone. There's no place really like this. This is true flats fishing at its best. So you're on these big, vast prairies of grass where you have these little sand depressions and troughs and false channels that kind of vein into the flat, if you will. And understanding how the water moves up there and how the fish are gonna use those egresses up that flat is super, super valuable. And the style that I tend to enjoy the most because I grew up doing it is the ability to throw to those targets because Dave's good at figuring out where the fish are. I'm good at throwing the targets. So both of us on the same boat, it's a pretty good team. The show we did today with Dank is, is really a team effort. So you've got someone that's push pulling the boat, calling the shot out, putting the boat in position for me to be able to see the fish. Even if you can't see the fish, you can see muds, you can see potholes, you can see the edge of the flat where the current is moving. So it is all about target fishing. Uh, some of the baits that I use today in, in the darker period when we really were limited on what we could see and we fished a lot of that smoky water, I was using a darker color. This is the Bloody Mary Sunday. This was the jerk shrimps that we used to sight fish a lot of the redfish and I did that on a chin lock hook. This is the Z-Man chin locks hook. It is belly weighted so that it has a real slow fall and this little dark colored bait is fantastic for fishing uh, those sandy little potholes where you can work it nice and slow and that little antennae uh, has like a little boot uh, shape to it which gives it a killer swimming action. The fish, the redfish, attacked this bait. Now I have all this stuff rigged up this is the Shimano Terramar Double X. This is a seven foot medium action rod. Probably my favorite blank. Even my casting rod is a seven foot uh, Terramar Double X uh, from Shimano. And it also is in the same action, same length, everything's the same. Now, the bait that really works well for me and my style of fishing is basically the trout eye with a four inch jerk shad. This is the beer run color, but this is just a fantastic little bait. It's, it's quick to the fish, uh, it's very accurate, easy to make a perfect cast with, uh, especially when you're throwing across the wind, into the wind, it's really a, a great setup. And it, it served me well today where Dave put me in position to catch fish and I had to make the cast, especially when it was windy. I really prefer this style of fishing over the rest. I hope you really enjoyed this episode with Dank. He's one of those incredible fishermen that really makes my job a whole lot easier. We had been pecking away, chipping away at numbers of fish all day. We had some really strong redfish numbers and quality fish. When we switched gears to try to target snook on only snook, I cannot tell you how many small male snook we wheeled. We caught them one after another. I mean, to, to a point where it just really got to be like, is there a larger snook that's going to sit in this depth of water that we're pulling or have they all moved into the deeper recesses and they're gonna have nothing to do with us? And about the time I thought we should call it, Dank says one more stop. This edge here, a little bit deeper, a little bit better current flow. Let's work it. Once we work that edge, I'll bet I didn't make a dozen casts and we had this snook come to the side of the boat that I knew was going to send us to Margaritaville, back to the Lorelei. I felt that dump. Felt him? Hey, oh yeah. He's some good burning line my too. finger up. Yeah, burning my finger up. That's a good one there, Dave. Good. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a good one. Whatever you do, CA, don't mess this up. 
<laughs> I don't want to pull up on that leader too hard in case it's frayed. Kind of, yeah. If you can get him to lay, it's better. If not, we'll do what we have to do. No, I can see the hook good. It's out of his mouth. Coming this side. All right. I think this one sends us back to the Lorelei. It's margarita time, baby. <laughs> I'm with you. So we worked hard all day. We caught those little ones earlier when the sun was out, then the clouds came back on us. And now we got this one, but. It is definitely margarita time after that one. What are you, the 11th hour man? You wait to the end of the day? Hey, you're gonna end on a big note. You may as well catch a big fish. Very nice. Great fish. All right, CA. Great fish. You owe me a drink. <laughs> I'll buy you two. Okay. I can't thank the Dankert family enough. I mean, when we come down here, they, they, they always allow us to stay with them. Uh, Dave and Linda always make time to go to dinner with Blondie and I. Uh, on this trip, they set us all up so that we could be successful. Uh, they got us a camera boat and Nelson was unbelievable. I can't thank Nelson enough. He, he really had to pull his ass off in this. I mean, we're pulling these flats and he's pulling two camera guys in all their gear. So Nelson, big ups to you, my friend. But I mean, Dave just makes it so easy for us to be successful here. And I, again, the hospitality between him and his wife, Linda, and, and Nelson helping us up. Guys, you made today's episode even better and possible.